In this tutorial you will learn how to do stream and catchment delineation using PC Raster Python. Here we are in the tutorials environment in the Anaconda prompt and looking at the files that come with this tutorial and we see a bounding box shapefile and four tiles that are downloaded from Earth Explorer, SRTM tiles and uh, that's all we need to create the streams and the catchment in this area. The first step is to mosaic the uh, SRTM tiles, the four tiles together and uh, make sure that you have pointed here to the right folder where these uh, files are stored and um, we can use some libraries import globe and from OSGO import gdal and uh, let's make a list of input files that are the TIFF files so we want to only list the TIFF files we do it like this and you see here already in this explorer that input files is a list with a size of four with these uh, files in it we can also print the list and there we see the file names of the different tiffs in the python list and now we're going to use that list to create a mosaic in a virtual file a vrt file a virtual file is very efficient in this case because it doesn't create the whole data set again but just describes how the tiles are connected we use gdal build vrt for that with the default settings it only needs the output file name mosaic.vrt and the list of input files we need to add flush cache to write the layer to disk so let's do that mosaic equals gdal.build vrt and then the output file name mosaic.vrt as a string and then the list with the input files and then we do mosaic.flush cache and then we will find the mosaic.vrt on our disk let's check that Here it is, and we can open that in QGIS. And there it is. Next step is to reproject and subset the mosaic so we have a smaller area to continue with. So we'll create a function to reproject and clip the mosaic using GDAL warp. Here we see the function. We import GDAL from OSGEO. We have the function reproject and clip. The inputs are the input raster, the output raster, projection. The shape file and the resolution. So here we define the GDAL warp options. The cut line DS name is the shape file, that's what we use to crop to the cut line and to clip. The output format is a GeoTIFF. This is the projection, and here the X and Y dimensions of the pixels, so the pixel size, and here the out image where we perform the warp with the input raster, the output raster, and the options. Then in the main script, the mosaic is uh, the VRT file that we just created, the polygon is the bounding box, the EPSG code also a string, the spatial resolution 30 meters, and the DM subset. So let's save this. I'm going to save this in the data folder and this will be clip reproject.py and let's run it and there it is so let's see if the result is on our disk And there it is, dm subset.tiff. 
and we can open that also in QGIS. We need to refresh. Here it is. And if I remove the mosaic, we see that the subset is there. And we can check the projection EPSG 32632. Let's change it also here in the project. There it is. So the next step is to convert it to the PC raster format. And uh, we'll use the same procedure as we have done before. I'm going to make a new script. So this one convert to PC raster. And there we have the TIFF file as an input, dm.map as an output. It's a flow32 and a scalar. And uh, I'm going to save this. And I'm going to call this TIFF to PC raster. And uh, let's run it. It has run. Let's see if we have it also on our disk. Uh, we can uh, import PC raster. We can read the map. And then with Aguila, we can visualize it. And this is our DEM. And it's exactly the same as the subset, so no difference. The next step is to calculate the flow direction. In the stream and catchment delineation procedure, we need to first remove the pits in the DEM. Pits are pixels surrounded by only higher pixels. A catchment can only have one pit, the outlet. So the other pits have to be removed by a procedure called fill sinks. In PC raster, the LDD create operation will both fill the DEM and derive the flow direction. The LDD create operation needs the DEM as input and has four arguments to control thresholds for the filling algorithm. These can be found in the PC raster documentation. Here we want to remove all pits. So we set the thresholds to a very high number. So let's calculate the flow direction. Using LDD create, it needs as an input the DEM, and then we use these very high threshold values to make sure that all pits are filled. This will take a bit because it's a big file, so have some patience. When it's done, we can visualize it. If we zoom in, we can see the flow directions and we can query them. And pits are these black dots. And they're mostly on the side. Although in this procedure we can proceed with uh, the flow direction map, we might want to create a DEM that is filled. And then you can use the LDD create DEM operation for that. It uses the same arguments as LDD create. So let's get that back with arrow up and change it a bit. DEM filled. LDD create DEM. For the rest it's the same and that will also take a bit but that will make a hydrologically corrected DEM. And we can report the files to disk. The next step is to delineate the streams. And we are going to uh, look at two methods. The first method is the Strahler order method, and the second one is the flow accumulation method. Let's start with the Strahler order. Strahler orders can be calculated using stream order from PC Raster, and the input is the flow direction. This will order the streams uh, using the method developed by Strahler. Let's have a look at the result. Here we see the result. Makes more sense if we change the color. We can do it by double clicking. And I want it low orders, yellow, and then to more blue for higher orders. 
So the more blue, the higher the chance that it's a real river. And that's exactly the point. We need to uh, calibrate these rivers in order to find out what is the threshold value for Strahler from which we consider that it's a river. So we need to determine the value from which we consider these streams a river. The data type of the Strahler order map is ordinal and it starts at 1. And now we need to determine after which Strahler order we can consider the flow big enough to call it a river. We do that through calibration. Let's calculate maps with Strahler order 5 to the maximum and compare them with OpenStreetMap. First we need to determine the maximum Strahler order in this map using map maximum. The map operations are the global operations in PC Raster. So let's uh, define it, maximum Strahler order equals map maximum of Strahler orders. And then I can uh, visualize the result. And it is 10. So what these global functions in PC Raster do is they write the result of the global function to each pixel. So each pixel here is value 10, but 10 is the highest Strahler order found in the Strahler order map. So the problem is that the result is a PC Raster map with for each pixel the maximum value of the map. If we want to iterate over the Strahler orders, we need to get the value. And we can use the cell value operation. The cell value operation needs the raster for which it has to give the cell value as an input, as well as a row and column index number. Here all cells are the same, so we can simply use 0 for the index, referring to the first row and the first column of the input raster. So maximum Strahler order tuple, because there will be the result, equals cell value of maximum Strahler order, and then with index values of 0. And then we can print the result, and we see it's a tuple within the first element it has 10, and the maximum value in the second one true, so that is a non-missing value. So the maximum Strahler order value is then maximum Strahler order tuple element 0. Let's print that. And now we see that's value 10. So we can use that now in the iteration. That is 4 order in range from 1 to maximum Strahler order value plus 1 because the range doesn't include the last value, only the first value of the range. Then do for each order stream equals if then Strahler orders are larger or equal to order then give a boolean of 1 and write it to disk Let's write it as stream and we concatenate a string of the order and we have to add dot map. So here in the loop we say for each order in this range from 1 to the maximum order value plus 1 because it's not included, do stream equals if the Strahler orders are larger or equal to the order number, then give it boolean 1, otherwise no data, and then we write it 
to the disk for each order. So this will give us 10 maps, order 1 to 10. And we can then evaluate all these orders in uh, QGIS. So I'm going to open uh, OpenStreetMap. And I'm going to open Strata orders. And we can, for example, check order number eight. So I've added it here. And here I can compare if order eight matches well the amount of rivers that I see on this uh, on this map. So that's the calibration. Well, we see that it fits uh, quite well, and uh, that it seems to correspond more or less with the rivers that we see on the map. So you can tune that by playing around with the threshold value and comparing it with OpenStreetMap or with a satellite image. And that's the calibration. So for now, we will just stick to uh, Strahler order 8 or larger to be considered as a river. Then another method is to use the flow accumulation method to derive the rivers. And there we can use the accuflux function for flow accumulation. So flow accumulation equals accuflux. And then the input is the flow direction, the LDD. And we use one unit of water on all the pixels that has to be accumulated. And then we can uh, visualize the result. And it is uh, on a logarithmic scale because there are many pixels with a low value and a few with a very high value, the rivers. So we can change it here to shifted logarithmic. That's needed because there are zeros. And let's also change this again to yellow to blue. And here also, again, the blue ones are the rivers. And then we need to determine uh, a threshold. And you do that in the same way. So you compare it with OpenStreetMap in uh, QGIS. And then you can determine the threshold. So for example, you can say river flow. If then the flow accumulation is larger than 9000. Let's say that that's what we determined with our calibration. Then give us Boolean 1, else no data. And then we can look at the river flow map where true is the river and false does not exist and there's no data. So you can use that also in the calibration. Here we'll use the Strahler method. So stream eight is already at the disk, so that's our uh, river. So the next step is to delineate a catchment belonging to a selected outlet. First, we need to identify an outlet on the delineated stream of the previous step. You can use the result from the Strahler order method or the flow accumulation method for finding the pixels that are part of the river. You can use QGIS or Aguila to find the coordinate. In Aguila, you can do that using the crosshair tool. So I'm going to uh, read the river using stream eight. And I'm going to visualize it. So we said that this was our river. And then I can define an outlet on the river. Let me use uh, this here. Make sure it's on the river, that it's really in a pixel. And then we can read the coordinates from here. And uh, PC Raster comes with a tool called to map, which reads a text file in, a, in the format x coordinate space y coordinate space id. And uh, that's what we're going to use here. So what we're going to do is to uh, use these coordinates and write them into a file. So I use copycon 
location dot text and then first the x coordinate two eight eight nine three four and the y coordinate five six seven five one five zero and then id one control z and then i can use call to map define the data type nominal location.text location map and then the clone is stream 8 map and here we can see that one record is read and that it uh, apparently worked let's check it Aguila location map and there should be one value that we can't easily find but that's somewhere there We can check it. And we see that the minimum maximum value is one, so that's okay. So let's uh, read the outlet. Location of map. And then we can use this to derive the catchment using the catchment operation. So this uh, catchment is the rule catchment, so I'm going to call it the rule catchment equals and then catchment. And it needs the flow direction and it needs the outlet. And let's uh, check the result. This is our catchment. There's a hole in it because there's a deep mine there that the water flows around. It has its own sub catchment. Sometimes you don't want to have the catchment of a specified outlet where you measure the discharge but you want to have all the catchments that you can find in the DEM. In that case we need to find all the pits and these pits are then considered as outlets. So we can create outlets using the pit operation which will find all the pits in the flow direction map. And there are a lot of them. There they are. And most of them are at the side of the map. And we'll use these pits to create uh, the catchments. So let's call it catchments equals and then the catchment operator uses the flow direction. And now we'll use outlets. And that will derive all the catchments. And here they are. So just based on all the pits, we find here all the catchments in the study area. Most are at the boundary because these are boundary effects where other catchments uh, extend beyond the study area. Now that's all nice stepwise, but uh, you also would like to uh, automate this. So also here we can compile everything in one piece of code. And that is done here. So written in different functions, a function to mosaic, a function to then reproject and clip, a function to convert to PC raster, then a function to calculate the flow direction, a function to do the stream delineation, and then to define the location with the outlet using call to map. Here we use it with a system call. And now this is the main script where we will just save this in the data folders. I'm gonna remove this. The extension of the tiles diff the name of the mosaic, name of the bounding box, the projection, the resolution, then the name of the subset, the name of the PC raster file for the DEM, the output of flow direction, the threshold, so this needs to be calibrated, so therefore you can't do this automatically. Here you can put the outlet coordinates that you want to use, define the clone, 
and then it can calculate all these things. Visualize it and report it. So let's save this and run it. Let's call it delineation. And let's run it with our coordinates. 288934 and 567515. So it's safe to delete all the files before you uh, run this script. So you only have the input files, then there is no. So let's run it. And there's the result.